you guys welcome to my channel in today's video I wanted to do a little bit of a different video and focus on not really product review but just share about my really cool espresso setup that I have right here I also got some new accessories that came in the mail so I wanted to try them out today as well so I figured let me pick up the camera and just do a video about it I don't really do product review videos too often I'm mainly more of like a I'll do like lash videos and things like that so it's a little mixture of a lot of random stuff but I love coffee I've always loved coffee if you know me you know I love coffee I'm not a coffee connoisseur or anything like that I am a newbie when it comes to the dialing in espresso and the tasting and just all of that so to kind of backtrack before this I had the cafe affetto with frother and that machine has been giving me quite a few issues I probably that's probably the one machine I would never recommend to anyone it's white it's gorgeous it's sleek it does the job. I had a lot of mold issues with that machine. You literally got to clean it every day. The first machine that I had, it gave me descale issues and then it sent me a new machine. That one started leaking from the bottom. So for our anniversary this year, I told my husband I wanted a new espresso machine. I did want to mention that I also had the Casa Brews, which is very similar to the Breville models, like the Breville Express. And then we were staying with my brother-in-law last year. We stayed with them for two months when we were passing through Missouri. And I was using his Breville and really loved that machine. It's very similar to the Casa Brews in a few ways, mainly aesthetics. So I am familiar with, you know, pulling a shot and things like that, but I'm still a complete newbie. So for our anniversary this year, I told my husband I wanted a new espresso machine and I happened to fall upon the Reddit thread of espresso and fell down the rabbit hole. And after tons and tons and tons and tons of reading, I decided on this combo here. I have the Gaggia Classic Evo Pro, which is, I believe, their 2023 slightly upgraded version. And I settled on the Eureka Grinder Specialita. And the reason why I settled on these two here is because I had a few requirements that I kind of wanted to check off. And I feel like when you're shopping for espresso machines or anything like a house, whatever, you have a few requirements that you're kind of focusing on. For me, a big one was they had to be white. I don't know what it is, but I love white. I was okay if it was like stainless steel, but it had like wood accents or something like that, but it wasn't my preferred choice. So I was focusing on machines that came in white, and then I also wanted them to be compact, sleek-ish, because we are staying in the RV and we don't really have room for like a huge setup by any means. So we're gonna be living here while we build our house, which could take a year or two, who knows. And my thought process behind this, because from my understanding of reading through the Reddit threads is a lot of people will recommend the Gaggia Classic, whether it's the Evo Pro, whatever, for beginners like myself or the Bambino Plus. There are a few other machines that people recommend, but when it comes to the price point that I was looking at, I didn't want to spend over a thousand dollars on both the espresso machine plus a grinder, so I figured I'll buy, I got this on sale, I believe it was five hundred dollars from Whole Latte Love, both of these are from Whole Latte Love, and I figured I'll put the savings of not buying a more expensive espresso machine towards a better grinder that way in the future if i wanted to i could upgrade the espresso machine and keep this grinder hopefully for forever and ever and ever because i hear they last for forever and ever and ever with proper maintenance and care and all of that so that is why i chose these two right here i've had it for a few weeks now and i personally have been loving it i've already added a few things like i have a smart plug there i have it set to turn on every single morning and i could control it from my phone if i want to turn it on or off which I think is really cool because this machine does take a little bit of time to heat up. So while I'm sleeping, it will automatically turn on on its own. I got a few other things which I'll show. I'm actually going to move the camera in a little bit closer and then also unbox some other things that came in the mail. So honestly, let's just get right into it. So here is the Gaggia Classic Pro here. I already turned it on through the app. I keep it on all the time and then I'll just control it in the app. I'll power it on or off. And I watched a few videos on how to use it, so I'm pretty comfortable with using it. I'm reading into like temperature surface surfing. I know a lot of people will say these machines don't have a PID temperature control, so you kind of have to do it manually if you want to. I'm not, again, I'm still a noob, so that's something that I can learn and in the future, maybe a few years down the road, if I need to update, I'll update to like the Profitech Go, Profitech Go, however you pronounce it, um, or a machine that does have PID temperature control. But for now, this works great for me personally in this espresso stage of life where I'm at. So this is the machine, it has the power on off button. Again, I keep this on all the time because I control it through the smart plug. This is the coffee brew button. Unlike 
the Casa Brews or other machines that I've had, you have to turn it on and either you time your shot and then you have to manually turn it off whenever you want your shot to stop. So there's no single or double, it's just this button here. And then this is the steam button here. And then this is the knob to open the steam wand. And then here you have the frothing wand. A few things off the bat that I'm not crazy about with this machine is the steam wand here. I almost wish it had more, like I can move it up and down, not just side to side. I was kind of disappointed about that. I guess I just wasn't expecting that. And then this drip tray. This drip tray is so large for no reason at all. So when I pop in my porta filter, there really is not much room to place a cup under there. So I'm having my brother print me, he has a 3D printer. He's gonna print me a smaller low profile drip tray you can buy low profile drip trays on etsy as i was going through etsy there's so much that you can buy for this machine and another thing that i recently got off etsy is a new steam tip so this steam tip has two holes in it which is great because it's super powerful compared to a single hole steam tip but for someone like me that's used to using a much weaker steam wand like the cafe of Feto or the casa brews this one is just too powerful for me and I felt like I was always so confident steaming milk before and I had no issues and then this one came along and I have all the issues in the world. So I decided to go on Etsy and buy a single hole steam tip for this machine. It came in really fast. I'll link it down below if anybody's interested. So this one just has a single hole which I read is easier because you don't have as much flow and you have more time to work with the milk. Cause this one, I don't have enough time. By the time I get the milk circulating, it's like, oh, too hot, gotta turn it off. Again, I was pretty confident in my milk frothing skills before until this came along. It's like a whole new experience. Did not expect that. So hopefully this steam tip helps. Another thing I got is a little side hanging porta filter hanging tool right there. I don't know if you can see it. I got that on Amazon. I just thought it'd be really neat to hold the porta filter. I got a puck screen. I don't know, I just thought this one was cool. It's probably not the best. I know a lot of people have all these fancy schmancy brands they recommend, like IMF baskets or whatever, but I'm a newbie here, so we'll get there. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. I got a new tamping tool. This one is, I found it on Amazon for like $8, and I was like, I can't pass that up. I don't think I'll ever find another tamping tool that is this heavy and this sturdy for $8 with a wood handle. The one that comes with this machine, it's literally a joke. I don't even know, I'm kind of disappointed in Gadja. This is the one that it comes with. I'm like, what? what is this? First of all, it doesn't even cover the entire basket, so your grounds go up the sides and it's just so frustrating. I'm surprised this even passed the test to be sold with this machine, but you know, whatever. I'm not the one that created it, but Word to the wise, whoever is making this machine, please upgrade your tamping tool because that one's it's a little embarrassing, I'm not gonna lie. I also got a dozing funnel so that the beans don't spill out of the basket when I'm grinding them. And then also a WDT tool, distributor tool, to get rid of any clumps in the basket. And the funnel is nice to keep all the grinds in place. It also came with a little brush if you wanted to brush off any grounds. And then the scale here I've had when I bought my Casa Brews and I was just starting out weighing things. And it's not the best one, but it was very affordable and I got it on Amazon and it does the job, so I'm not upgrading anytime soon. I've had this for like a year and we're keeping it. I'm still waiting on a, like a little box, wooden box, where I can place all of these gadgets, but for now I just keep it in this little corner here. So that's kind of a brief overview of the espresso machine. The grinder I think is really neat. I actually didn't show that part, I completely forgot, but you turn it on the side here. You have the screen here. It grinds by time, so you can set the timer for a single or a double shot. I have it set to 10.3 seconds because I just want it to grind all the beans, but I actually dose it by weight. So I'll weigh out 14 beans every single time, pop them in here, open up this little piece here so the beans can fall down, and then I just grind it. I don't really use the timer settings yet, maybe when I get more comfortable with it, but for now I just kind of single dose, which is why I wanted the Me Coffee one. That one sold out, the white one. They had the black one, but I was really particular about getting the white one, so I didn't want to wait, so I just decided to get this one. I heard really great things, and I don't know, it's been working well for me. They do also sell little, um, I had to look it up. It was a single dose hopper with a bellow, so it's like a little, almost looks, I don't know what you call it in English, a harmoshka, like a harmonica type thing, and it helps to get rid of any beans that might be grounds that might be stuck in there, so it gets, helps with retention. I might get one in the future, but for now this works just fine for me as I am learning 
all the ropes but this is the specialita it looks super high tech and it's a little too modern for me i'm not big on like modern things i'm just not that person but i think it looks really cool especially here in the corner so i do like it i had some beans come in by the way this is a super casual style video if you want to learn about the machine this is not the video to watch there are a lot of great videos from whole latte love as well as others that do this for a living and can tell you all this fancy schmancy bells and whistles i'm just here really excited to share about my new espresso machine and my um my grinder but i ordered some coffee beans so when we were traveling in the rv we went through like pennsylvania ohio illinois missouri texas louisiana all that just kind of went through now we are stationed in north carolina and we bought land in south carolina and while we were traveling we made it an effort to stop by local coffee places and buy their roasts so it's really cool because we got to try a lot of small coffee shop roasts that were local to the area that we were staying at here in north carolina there's a place in marion called ingenious coffee roasters there was a blend in particular that i really loved the i think it's a brazil pea berry it was a pea berry of sorts absolutely loved it when i was using it with my cafe affetto and then i got this set up here and it just did not taste the same <laughs> I never really tasted espresso to begin with. I would just like pour it in milk, but even as a milk-based drink, it just, it didn't taste the same. I was like, am I doing something wrong? Do I, like, so I started really reading in, dialing in lighter roasts versus darker roasts. Who knew that was a thing? Now I do. So I decided to opt for some darker roasts because I feel like I might prefer them more in general. I'm not right now at this season in my life i'm not crazy about fruity citric although they did have a like orange citrusy type pour over that they did there for coffee it was phenomenal like you could really taste the bright citrusy flavors so good but for espresso not quite there yet so i decided to order the tesla blend which has notes of a robust spicy walnut and it's supposed to be i think it's like a medium roast if i'm not mistaken and then i also picked up the einstein's dark so we're gonna try this dark roast i always had the notion not to use dark beans in your espresso machine grinder because it can clog it up but then everybody's recommending to use dark roast for espresso so usually the cappuccinos that you drink in italy are dark roasts so i was like really confused there if anybody can specify in the comments do let me know is it just the machines they have the grinder built in that they don't recommend it for that was always boggling my mind maybe i'm missing something and i haven't read about it yet but do let me know if you know in the comments i would love to know i would love to know i think i'm gonna try out einstein's dark today if you see like oh my gosh what is she doing Please don't laugh, have some mercy. We were all newbies at one point, weren't we? So this is where I'm at. And then I also got from Amazon, I'm trying to support more like small shops, but the whole Latte Love version of this was like $90 and the Amazon version of this was $50. So for me, it's kind of like a no brainer. I decided to get a bottomless portafilter, which I'm kind of scared to use because I have a feeling it's not gonna be like one beautiful flow flowing from the middle and it's just gonna emphasize everything that I've maybe been, maybe been doing wrong. But I decided to get a wood handle bottomless portafilter and this time they sent me the correct one. I, this is my second time ordering it. I had to return the first one because the ears were not right for the first one. The first one they sent me, the ears were on the sides here, which must have been for a Breville model. I'm not sure because they do sell a few different models. And then they have one that has three ears. You need the one where the ears are kind of slanted on an axis here, like so. So sadly I had to return this one, but the woodwork and just the entire everything about it, it's really nice, really high quality. So much better than the stock one that it comes with in my opinion. This basket seems a lot larger as well. This one only holds full 14 grams, so. I'm assuming this one probably holds more, but I guess we will see. On the website, I believe it said 14 grams. I'm sure the basket's probably not the best quality compared to those IMF baskets that everyone and their mom's recommending. I know there's a reason behind it, but I don't know. I just thought it was really cool. So for now, we're keeping the basket that it came with. Don't judge me. But here are the two side by side. So Amazon, 50 bucks, really nice quality. We're going to give it a try. Another thing that I totally forgot, I got a Normcore 
Yes, just making sure I pronounce it correctly. Normcore Handleless Frothing Pitcher. Comes in black and white, eagle spout or rounded spout. I got the rounded spout because, you know, newbie. And I really love this. Love that it's white and it's so much easier, in my opinion, to control the latte art, which we are still working on big time. First thing that I'm going to do is brew about six ounces of water or so. Probably four out of the goop head. No portafilter on. Fill that out. And then they do recommend popping in the portafilter to warm it up. But I'm just going to get right into it. Let me wash this one with some soap and water. According to the Amazon description page, it says, first of all, this is a 58 millimeter basket, which is another reason that I wanted the Gaggio Classic because it has your barista quality 58 millimeter basket versus the 54 like a lot of the Breville models but it says that this is an 18 gram basket so I'm used to using 14 grams but we are going to do 18 grams today I guess so let me grab my little scale here actually you know what let me just pop this in for a second make sure it fits Ooh, it fits like a charm and so smooth too look how much more beautiful it looks if they did wood accents i also want to eventually change out the knob here eventually because they do sell wooden knobs on etsy again i feel like etsy has everything and i feel like just changing out those two things makes it look so much more rich in my in like more expensive in my opinion i just love the look of wood accents just like a personal preference so i have these little glasses here i got a set of two they're kind of like teacups and i use them i've we went from like full-blown lattes to cappuccinos to cortados to kind of this which is kind of like a cortado size and i feel like i'm enjoying less milk in my drink these days so these are just the perfect size for me so i'm gonna go ahead and tar that on the screen by the way this coffee place ingenious coffee they do roast their coffee beans in-house it was really cool to see we were talking to the owner's father really awesome guy this is what the beans look like again they look oilier they wouldn't these actually are not too oily they're not like starbucks oily you know what i'm talking about starbucks i do not i can't with starbucks beans but i'm gonna weigh out 18 grams of beans maybe like 18.2 just in case a bean or two gets stuck in there 18.2 and from what i read usually they recommend grinding finer for darker beans and coarser for lighter beans correct me if i'm wrong i am willing to listen to all the recommendations down below and i always keep reading every single time just to make sure and what people recommend but at the end of the day it boils down to personal preference so i have it set to well i found my zero point and then i've just kind of just been tweaking it back and forth depending on the beans so we'll see this is the first shot put my beans in there take this out so that the beans can fall in there it does popcorn a little bit but it's nothing crazy that i'm worried about all right get my portafilter out pop on the dozing funnel and let's try this grind size i'm gonna use my wdt tool to make sure there's no clumps all right this is what we have so far Pop that in there. Kind of nervous, not gonna lie. Okay, that's probably way too fine. Nothing's coming out. I ended up turning it off because it was just taking way too long and it's just a clear indication that the grind size is way too fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it a bit more coarse and hopefully get a little bit closer to dialing these beans in. This one's a lot better. I feel like we're getting a lot closer. So at 27 seconds, I have a, a little under 38 grams. I might lower it down just a smidge, but I'm just gonna add milk to this shot because I feel like we finally have a decent shot. And yes, I need to work on my puck prep, as you guys saw, a little embarrassing. I feel like this was a whole workout, just trying to 
configure this, but let me try this shot out. Oh, it's not as bitter. And you release some of that water from the steam wand. And then while that heats up, I'm gonna pour some milk in my pitcher. I'm really interested to see how this single hole steam tip is gonna be compared to the other one. I'm sure as I get better, I'll transition back to the two hole steam tip. I hear that baristas use like sometimes four. So, you know, newbie. All right, I might've been blocking that entire view, but I do feel like the steam tip is easier to use. All right, now for the pun part. The latte art, which we are heavily, heavily working on. And then I don't add any sugar or anything. I don't really, unless I'm like getting a holiday drink or something, I usually just love milk and espresso, coffee. Milk is a bit thick, but we got a little leaf. And the color is gorgeous. Progress, not perfection. I got another espresso blend from another cafe. They have like an espresso blend mix of light, medium, and darker beans. And it was pretty good, but I feel like I might like this one even more. So this is the Einstein's Dark. If you buy, this is not sponsored by any means, and none of this is sponsored. <laughs> um, but if you buy two bags or more, you get free shipping. I know everybody has like their places that they like to buy from. I like this. This is like cafe quality. I'm pretty proud of myself, you guys. We gotta, we gotta work on the puck prep, not gonna lie. Now that I have a bottomless porta filter, you know, it's embarrassing me left and right, literally. Thumbs up to the Espresso Reddit thread. It's just been super, super duper helpful. Yeah, and I'm really excited to kind of play around this machine and keep learning. I feel like you gotta start somewhere, and this is my journey, and I'm really excited. So I just wanted to share on a fun, upbeat, light video, and hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out, and hopefully I'll see you guys in future videos. Usually I do lash videos, but... Sometimes, like once in a while, I'll do like a product review, and coffee is just a big part of my life, so I decided to have something like this on my channel. But anyway, thanks for watching, and see you next time. <laughs>